Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I am with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today, I am going to be reading to you chapters 3 and 4 of A to Z Mysteries, The Canary Caper, written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, published by Random House, New York. Chapter 3 The kids left the pet shop and headed up Main Street. They walked slowly, thinking about what to do. I've read about scientists stealing animals to use in experiments, Josh said. That's awful, Dink said. I don't want tiger used in some experiment, said Ruth Rose. We have to find those animals. Where do the Gwens and the Pardues live? The Gwens live over by us on Thistle Court, Dink said. Why don't we go talk to them, Ruth Rose said. Maybe the pet nappers left some clues. The kids cut through the high school grounds and past the circus trailers. A few of the workers were sitting at a picnic table drinking coffee. They waved when the kids walked by. Which house is the Gwens? Ruth Rose asked when they reached Thistle Court. That big gray one, Josh said. The mailbox in front said Gwen in black letters. Ruth Rose walked up the steps and rang the doorbell. Mrs. Gwynne opened the door. Hi, kids. How's your summer so far? She asked. Not so great, Ruth Rose said. Someone stole my cat yesterday. Oh, Ruth Rose, how awful. My parrot disappeared yesterday, too. So did Mrs. Davis's canary, Josh added. We just came from the police station, Dink put in. Officer Fallon told us about your parrot. Dr. Perdue's rabbit is also missing. Mrs. Gwynne's mouth fell open. My goodness! Do you mean that four pets disappeared yesterday? We think so, Ruth Rose said. Where was your parrot when you last saw him? On my back porch in his cage, Mrs. Gwynne said. Can we see the cage? Dink asked. Mrs. Gwynne took them through the kitchen to a screened-in back porch. A cage stood in one corner. Archie likes it out here said Mrs. Gwynne. He can watch the other birds in the trees. Yesterday, I came out to have my lunch, but he was gone. Dink checked the screen door that led to the backyard. Was this locked? He asked. I don't really remember. We often leave it unlocked, Mrs. Gwynne said. Could Archie have opened his cage door himself? Josh asked. Mrs. Gwynne shook her head. We always keep a clothespin on his door to make sure he can't open it. Someone must have stolen him, Ruth Rose said. Oh dear, I don't like to think of crime in Green Lawn, Mrs. Gwynne said with a sigh. Can I offer you kids something to drink? It's pretty warm. No thanks, Ruth Rose said. But do you mind if we look in your phone book for Dr. Pardue's address? They're at number three Pheasant Lane, Mrs. Gwynne said. I dropped Mike off there to play tennis with Andy Pardue. The kids thanked Mrs. Gwynne and hurried to Main Street. This is getting weirder and weirder, Dink said. A canary and a parrot were snatched right out of their cages in broad daylight, with people home. And Tiger was probably in my backyard when she was taken, Ruth Rose said. They waved to Mr. Paskey at the book nook and headed up Aviary Way. Three Pheasant Lane was a big green house surrounded by tall trees. A kid holding a tennis racket was sitting on the front porch. Hi, Ruth Rose said, walking up to the porch. Is Dr. Pardue home? We'd like to talk to him about his rabbit. I'm Andy Pardue, the kid said. Violet's my rabbit. Why, did you find her? No, but my cat is missing too, Ruth Rose said. And so are two other pets in town. Dink glanced around the Pardue's front yard. When did your rabbit disappear? He asked Andy. After lunch yesterday, he said. My sister ran into the house screaming. I went out to the cage and the door was wide open. Violet was gone. Can you show us the cage? Ruth Rose asked. Andy led them to the backyard. An empty rabbit hutch stood under a tree. Was the cage locked? Josh asked. Yep. I lock it every night myself. Andy Pardue gave them a sharp look. What's going on anyway? A ring of animal thieves? That's what we're trying to find out, 
Dink said. Well, let me know what you dig up, said Andy. Boy, I'd like to get my hands on the creep who did this. My little sister cried all night. The kids walked back to Woody Street. Let's stop and check in with Mrs. Davis, Dink suggested as they passed her house. We should tell her about the other missing animals. When Mrs. Davis opened her door, she had a big smile on her face. Oh, I'm so glad to see you three, she exclaimed. You'll never guess. A man just called. He said he found Mozart. He's bringing him here at 630. Isn't that lovely? That's great. Dink looked at Josh and Ruth Rose in surprise. I want you three to be here since you were kind enough to look for him, Mrs. Davis continued. Afterward, we'll have some of my strawberry shortcake to celebrate. Super, Josh said. We'll see you at 630, Dink said with a wave. The three started home. Josh grinned. I guess Mozart wasn't kidnapped after all. I guess not, Dink said. He looked at Ruth Rose. She wasn't smiling. There's one thing I don't understand, she finally said. How did he know who to call? How did that man know who Mozart belonged to? Dink shrugged. Maybe he found him near Mrs. Davis's house and asked one of her neighbors. Or, Ruth Rose said, Maybe the guy who called is the same guy who took Mozart. But that doesn't make sense, Dink said. Why would someone steal a canary on Thursday and return it the next day? For the reward, Ruth Rose said with a frown. This guy steals pets, then returns them for money. Dink and Josh just stared at Ruth Rose. They walked the rest of the way home in silence. Chapter 4 Dink and Ruth Rose sat on Dink's front porch. They'd just finished dinner and were waiting for Josh. Ruth Rose sighed. Tiger hasn't come home yet? Dink asked. She shook her head. Cats can be pretty mysterious sometimes, Dink said. He wanted Ruth Rose to feel better. Maybe she's visiting a cat buddy somewhere. Ruth Rose looked down. She's never stayed away like this. Suddenly, Dink noticed that Ruth Rose had forgotten her headband. Her curly hair was hanging in her eyes. Just then, Josh came running down Woody Street, carrying his sketch pad. He jogged across Dink's lawn. Did Tiger come back yet? He asked. No, Ruth Rose said, standing up. Come on, let's go see who brings Mozart back. A few minutes later, they were ringing Mrs. Davis's doorbell. Ruth Rose had a determined look in her eye. If this guy has cat scratches on his hands, I'm calling Officer Fallon. Mrs. Davis opened her door dressed for the occasion. The green gem in her necklace sparkled in the evening sunlight. I hope you've brought your appetites, she said. To help us celebrate Mozart's return, I've made some shortcake. Josh grinned. I might be able to eat a small helping. Mrs. Davis laughed. Oh, poo, Joshua Pinto. I've seen what you can do to a batch of my cookies. They walked into the living room. Mozart's empty cage sat on the piano. It will be so good to hear Mozart sing again, Mrs. Davis said. The doorbell chimed. He's here! Mrs. Davis hurried to the door. A thin young man stood smiling on the front porch. He was dressed neatly in a white shirt, dark pants, and blue suspenders. The man held a small box with holes poked in the sides. I'm Fred Little, he said. Here's your canary. Dink looked at the man's hands as he passed the box to Mrs. Davis. Not a single claw mark. He shot a look at Ruth Rose. Thank you, Mr. Little, said Mrs. Davis. Won't you step inside? Mrs. Davis introduced him to Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. Then she opened the box and lifted out her canary. Well, Mozart, how was your vacation? She gave the canary a quick kiss and placed him in his cage. Everyone paused to watch Mozart hop around then settle down to preen his feathers. Mr. Little, I can't tell you how grateful I am, Mrs. Davis said, but how did you know where to bring him? Ruth Rose kicked Dink in the ankle. Fred Little smiled. I had to do some detective work, he said. I called the pet shop today and asked who in town owned a canary. A nice woman told me your name, so I looked you up in the phone booth. 
That must have been Mrs. Wong, Dink said. We talked to her today, too, about Ruth Rose's missing cat. When did you call her? The man stared at Dink. I don't remember exactly, he said. It was right after I caught the canary. Mrs. Davis clapped her hands. How thoughtful of you to go to so much trouble. Will you accept a reward? Ruth Rose glanced at Dink with a smirk on her face. The man smiled at Mrs. Davis. You're very kind, he said, but no thanks. It's reward enough seeing your little bird back home again. Dink snuck a quick look at Ruth Rose. She looked confused, and Dink could understand why. If he won't take a reward, then he didn't steal Mozart. And if Mozart didn't get kidnapped, maybe Tiger didn't either, Dink thought. Then will you at least have a cup of tea and a cookie? Mrs. Davis asked. That'll be fine, he said. May I use your bathroom? Down the hall on the right, Mrs. Davis said. Kids, will you help me in the kitchen? While Mrs. Davis boiled water and arranged her silver tea service, the kids put cookies on a tray. He didn't take the reward, Ruth Rose whispered, frowning. I can't believe I was wrong. I don't know, Ruth Rose, Dink said. There's something fishy about this guy. Why didn't Mrs. Wong tell us he called her? We saw Mrs. Wong in the morning, Josh reminded them. Fred Little must have called her later. Yeah, I suppose, Dink said. But I have this weird feeling I've seen Fred Little somewhere before, Josh said. Around here? Ruth Rose asked. Josh shrugged. I'm not sure. I can't remember. What are you three whispering about? Mrs. Davis called. I'll need some helping hands in a minute. When they were all seated around the card table, Mrs. Davis poured five cups of tea. Are you just passing through, Mr. Little? I haven't seen you in town before. I'm here looking for a job, Fred Little said. So you might settle in Green Lawn. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Fred Little smiled. It's a nice town. He glanced around the living room. You sure have a lovely home, Mrs. Davis. Why, thank you. When my husband was alive, we traveled a great deal, Mrs. Davis said. We brought back something special from each country we visited. Fred Little left a few minutes later, and the kids helped Mrs. Davis clean up. Still have room for shortcake? She asked, grinning at Josh. Sure do, he answered, picking up his sketch pad. Josh began to draw a picture of Fred Little's face. I just wish I could remember where I've seen this guy before. Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters five and six. Goodbye.